Hey everyone, it's Kyle here, and in this week's tutorial, we're going to be making a special MyBlock that stores color sensor calibration values as a text file within the EV3 brick. So today's tutorial is a little bit special because this was a program that was sent to me by one of my fans in hopes that I would share it on my channel with all of you so you guys could learn about how it works. Uh, this was sent by one of my viewers in South Africa who is on FLL Team LEGO Legends which is Team GP1714 and as I said before it's a special calibration my block that allows you to save the calibration values for a color sensor in a text file which you could then retrieve from another program off of the EV3 robot and it uses the file access block which is under the advanced section in the EV3 software. The advantage of storing your calibration values within a text file on the EV3 brick is that you can then access them from any program on the EV3 brick and the added advantage is that it's more secure so if the program or even the calibration ends or gets interrupted these calibration values won't get lost or corrupted they'll still stay in that file on the EV3 brick and you can use them again in a different program they'll be saved on the EV3 brick and it's not affected by any of those program interrupts or anything so without further ado let's take a look at their program and see how it works I have my EV3 software open and I'm very excited to share with you this calibration my block that LEGO Legends has shared with me this is what the my block looks like after it's all finished and it has two parameters there's a black addition input and a white subtraction input and you can type in uh, any value you want here these are kind of like margin of error values don't worry about this for now because I'll explain exactly what they do when we dissect the program but before we go on if you haven't seen my tutorial on creating my blocks or especially my tutorial on my block parameters please go see those now because if you don't you'll probably be pretty confused and won't be able to implement this correctly anyway now let's dissect this my block to see what's going on I'll click up here to see the inside of this calibrate my block and you see that these parameters that we defined before we're taking these input values and storing them as numerical values so the black addition parameter uh, input parameter gets stored as a variable of the same name and same with our white subtraction value that's the first thing that happens in the my block and we store them in variables so we can refer to them later because we're not using them at the moment but after we've stored those values it moves into a loop here there's a short wait just uh, four tenths of a second and then there are a bunch of text blocks here what the text does is not necessarily anything within the operation of the program but it makes the program very user friendly because it shows the user on the screen what's happening at any given time so you don't have to have a total understanding of what the program is doing in order to use it because it tells you on the screen with these text blocks moving on we have our first sensor block this is where the things start to get interesting it's going to measure the reflected light intensity and the color sensor in port 1 this text merge block just displays the whatever reflected light intensity value this color sensor is reading alongside of the word sensor and then writes it to a text block again to display on the screen and again this is just to make the program more user friendly and it's going to do the same exact thing with the color sensor in port 2 read the inflect, uh, reflected light intensity uh, then display it on the screen and this is going to repeat until the user presses and releases the middle brick button the reason why it repeats of course is so it continuously refreshes the screen with whatever value the color sensors are reading at that given point in time so after the user ends this loop the, whatever values that are being read at that moment are going to be stored as the calibration value so then it moves on to the next part of the program where it creates the calibration value some more text to show what the robots doing at this point in time but the color sensors one and two are going to read whatever reflected light intensity is there at the moment and plug it into this advanced math block which is going to process the values and eventually make your black reflected light intensity value but if we move back a step what is actually going on in here so as you can see from here it's going to add the port 1 and port 2 reflected light intensity values they're in parentheses here so you can see it does it first then it's going to divide by the C value which is 2 so these first three steps here are averaging the port 1 and port 2 reflected light intensity black uh, sensor values the reason why they do an average is because they don't want to have to do 
a new sensor value for each sensor. Instead, they just want one black and one white value that they can use for all of their sensors. And they found that averaging is the best way to accomplish this. You could, of course, set it up individually for each sensor, but that's a lot of work. Um, and if you find you need to do that, you can. But they had their sensors very well shielded from any ambient light, so it ended up that the 1 and 2 sensor values were generally very close, if not the same, uh, most of the time. So after they've averaged the value, then they add this black addition value onto this average. The reason why they do that is, as they explained it to me, this is their margin of error value. So let's say, hypothetically, you program your robot to look for a light value less than 8%, and this is going to be your robot looking for the black line. But what if your robot was driving along and it saw the black line, but it measured a light intensity of 12% for the black line? That's too high, and the robot's just going to pass over it, not even realizing that it's reached the black line, and of course your program no longer works. So what they do is that black addition value is kind of like a margin of error. It adds a little bit onto the uh, average here, the calibration value, to make that threshold a little bit wider. So let's say if you added 5, now if, you're, uh, if your robot is sensing a 12% for the line, 8 plus 5 is 13 becomes your new threshold value. That means the black line is now within your threshold value. So you can think of this black addition value as a margin of error. The thing with the value though is it's an arbitrary value so you can't just use 5. You'll have to actually do some experimenting yourself to see which works best with your specific robot, your specific mat, and the lighting conditions associated with it. But anyway that's what that does. So the average of two values then adding that margin of error on and then it stores it in a variable called black RLI average, no surprise there, uh, so we can refer to this later, and it writes it to the screen using a display block. And it gives the user five seconds to check out this value that they've just measured to verify that this value is what they actually want to use as their calibration value in case that something went wrong. And if this value is not what they want to use, then they could just end the program, restart it again, and then repeat the process but in the event that it is correct it's going to move on and then it's going to do the same exact thing for the white line where now instead of looking for the minimum for black we're looking for the maximum for white but otherwise this looks pretty much the same it should look very familiar because the steps are all the same except for one which we're getting to in a second but as you can see it displays some text to make it user friendly then displays the sensor values to the screen and repeats this until the user decides that they have found the value that they want to store. So they press the button, they move on, some more text displays, and then this also should look familiar. So it's going to take the average of the bright white light value from ports 1 and 2. So of course adding divide by 2 gives you the average. Then we're going to take the white subtraction value and subtract it from the average. This is kind of similar to what we did with the, the black side, except instead of adding, we need to subtract this threshold margin of error value. And the reason being because now you can think of things in the opposite direction. We're looking for a maximum, so we need to subtract to make our threshold larger. Where instead of looking for a light value of 75, you subtract 5, so you're looking at a value of 70. So your greater than um, threshold is now a little bit larger, and you could see more of the... Uh, light values that you would otherwise reject. But anyway, that's the reason why you subtract as opposed to add, but otherwise it's the same steps as you did with the the black uh, calibration value. And they store this in a variable here named white RLI average, and they display this on the EV3 screen, and it gives you another five seconds to verify that this is the correct value that you want to use. Finally, we get to the actual storing the values part of the MyBlock. The first thing the, the MyBlock does is it deletes the existing white and black text values in there. And this is something very important that LEGO Legends stressed to me because they had to find out the hard way that when you simply write to a text file, it adds a new line under the existing line. And when you read, it still only reads that first line. So it's almost as if you didn't even update the value at all. So you need to delete the existing uh, text value and write a new one if you want this to work correctly. And of course you need to delete both the white and the black. Now it's time to store the new sensor value that we just measured. So you take the, you read the white variable that we just wrote and using a file access, uh, using a file access block, 
we're going to make a new text file it's going to be named white and we're going to write this numerical value into a text file that can be accessed later and this uh, file access block is found under the blue advanced section so you can see it's over here and of course we write this sensor value to the file we can access it later and then the last step would be to close using another file access block the white file the reason why they close it is because they don't want to use any extra computing power keeping this file active but at the same time they don't uh, closing the value make sure that this value is not going to get corrupted or changed at any point in time so it's just kind of like a safety feature if you will we're going to do the same thing with the black value that we measured so you read the black calibration value from the variable it's stored in you write it to a text file this time uh, the text file is named black and then you're going to close this text file named black and now when you write your program for your FLL robot if you need to refer back to these text files you just use a file access you type in the name of the file that you want in this case it's going to be white right because that's what we use and then you're going to read that text file and then whatever the text file is then you could use you could use it in your program and you have your calibration value saved so anyway back to this my block I'm actually going to remove this block here I just brought that out for example it displays some text on the screen it says calibration complete and then prints the white and the black reflected light intensity values that it just measured to the screen and gives the user six seconds and this again is to verify allow the user to make sure that it's measured the correct sensor values and that the user is okay with the values and it stored them and then after that the program ends and these black and white values are saved and like I said you could pull them up in any program that you need them by using another one of these file access blocks pretty cool right now I'd like to take a moment to recognize and thank LEGO Legends FLL Team GP1714 for being so generous to provide this program with me today so I could share it with you guys so you can learn about file access on the EV3 brick. So thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. And if you have a program that you would like to share and see featured on my channel and uh, shared with the rest of my audience, what you could do is go to builderdude35.com and go to the contact me section of my website and send me an email. And we can discuss the possibility of making a tutorial that features your program to help teach my audience about a certain concept. Thanks for checking out my video this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.